Right, this morning we're going to take a short flight over to Elizabeth City from Concord. Going to pick up my son, bring him home for the weekend. And on the way, I'd like to discuss uh, something I saw on YouTube. I've seen a few videos on how to own and fly an airplane for free. Uh, I've uh, I brought some numbers along with me. I thought once we get airborne, we'll talk about that and uh, and see if that's possible. Cockroach tower down five two six Delta Sierra, holding short of two, ready to go. Five six Delta Sierra, eastbound, turn out runway two, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, five two eastbound, five two six Delta Sierra. Cockroach tower, Archer five zero seven Golf, going around runway two, five zero seven Golf. Five zero seven Golf, left traffic. Left traffic, five zero seven Golf. All right, clear morning, cold, and I'm lightly loaded, so she's just sprinting off the ground. Today we're taking a short flight from Concord to Elizabeth, North Carolina. Going to pick up my son, bring him home for the weekend. It's about an hour, 45 minute flight or so, depends on the wind. And I thought while we were flying, we'd talk about something. I, I'd seen a few videos on YouTube about how to own and fly a plane for free. And I've owned this plane for six, now, six years now, and it's been in a lease back with a flight school for six years. So. I have some real numbers about whether that's possible and uh, whether these guys on YouTube really know what they're talking about. So once we get out here and get up to our cruise altitude level, I'll, uh, I'll go over some numbers with you and we'll talk about whether you can own and fly a plane for free. All right, we're flying uh, east today, about an hour, 45 minutes or so. Of course, the sun is directly in my face. And uh, I thought I'd take a few minutes to talk about can you own and fly a plane for free? I've seen a few videos on uh, Facebook. Some guys say you can own and fly a plane for free. The technique they're doing, uh, using to do this, is a lease back to a flight school. And if you're not familiar with that, what that is is you let the flight school use your plane for a fee, usually a fixed hourly rate, but there's different different arrangements. And they use it for training, and then they pay you per hour of uh, flying. Um, there's some ups and some downs. You do get some money. The plane can potentially take some uh, abuse. Uh, you need to pick your flight school carefully. Uh, you need to pay attention to the plane. You can't just give it to them and let it go. I, I go down quite frequently and clean the plane, make sure it's maintained properly, uh, because my theory is if, if it looks nice and it's clean, people will treat it better than if it's just an old beater piece of junk. Uh, some of these videos I, I've seen um, fall in a few categories. One is people who don't even own a plane or don't do a leaseback. And they just assemble some hypothetical numbers. Ah, uh, we'll assume this per hour and that per hour, whatever. And uh, that may be educated guesses, but it's not real numbers. And, and I think a lot of times they either underestimate or they leave things out. Um, the other category of videos I've seen are people who purportedly own the plane and lease it back to the flight school. Uh, but when they start showing their numbers, that they seem to be off or there's something missing, usually. Uh, one guy said he, he leased leased it back to a flight school and they flew it 600 hours uh, in a year. But yet when he got to his maintenance cost, the, uh, he only listed one annual. There were no 100 hour inspections. And when a plane is for hire, it needs to get inspected every 100 hours. Uh, and in my experience, a 100 hour inspection is darn near as expensive as an annual. So, you know, my annuals run 1800 to $2,000 a year, assuming I will find much wrong. So if you miss four or five of those, hundred hours in your cost. That's a big chunk of change. That could be eight, ten thousand dollars you're off. Um, another guy threw up his numbers and he didn't have insurance. 
Um, insurance is a huge cost, and it's getting worse every year, um, if you can even find it. Some of the insurance companies are pulling out of aviation, and uh, they won't even cover you. Uh, my insurance has gone up uh, altitude quite a bit since I started flying. Started out about nine thousand a year. I think we're last year I have numbers for we were over eleven thousand dollars a year to insure the plane. Now, of course, those numbers are all going to vary. It depends how much your plane's worth, how old it is, the performance characteristics, uh, those kind of things. So, and everything I tell you today is going to vary a little bit depending on the plane and patient. But I think it'll give you a pretty good idea uh, whether you can pull off what these guys are saying and buy a plane, own it for free, and uh, and get out from under it, and get you know, get to have a plane at no cost. So, as a rule, as I mentioned, the flight school will pay you per hour. Uh, fuel is uh, usually taken care of by the flight school. That usually doesn't fall to the owner, um, so you can take that right out of the equation as far as the ownership cost. Uh, but everything else falls to you. You pay for the hangar, the insurance, the maintenance, the upkeep. Everything is an expense that comes out of your pocket. Uh, in my case, they just deduct it out of the money I'm getting uh, because we have in-house maintenance and uh, I get the residual of what's left after all the expenses are done. So the last year um, I have complete year numbers for is 2021 and as it turns out that was my most profitable year for the plane and uh, the other years uh, actually showed a pretty good loss uh, early on and we'll talk about a little bit there, there's there's still some advantages even if you're showing a loss on the plane it can still it still be advantageous to do a leaseback. So let's take a look at the numbers uh, that I assembled for 2021 and go through those and let's see if, if we out flying and owning a plane for free. Okay, so the plane rented for 300 hours in 2021. I flew it for 127 hours. So we had a total of 426 hours on the plane in 2021. Now those rental hours produced an income of over $38,000. And that, that looks pretty appetizing. But then maintenance comes in, 16 grand. And I'll break that cost down for you in a little bit here. We had insurance, which is extraordinarily high, but that's what it is. And we had a hanger that we put it in. It is a heated hanger. It's a nice hanger. And then we have subscriptions, which is the uh, Garmin Aviation Database is the biggest one of those. And finally, we have taxes. We have personal property tax on these uh, airplanes in this, this state. So we had a net of almost $3,500. So you say, well, you did make a profit. Well, we'll talk about that again in a minute. Uh, maintenance broke down like this. We had an annual inspection on it. We had three 100-hour inspections on it. And then we had four 50-hour uh, inspections and oil changes. Basically, it's an oil change, a little bit of inspection. Uh, parts and repairs, seven grand. And the biggest parts of those were flywheel and starter had to be replaced. We've gone through multiple tires. She will eat up some tires in flight training. And spark plugs, canopy seal, lights, miscellaneous. So all that added up to about $7,000. And that's uh, the breakdown on our maintenance costs. Okay, so let's get back to that net profit. You say, oh, you turned a profit last year. Well, it really didn't turn a profit because I owe money on the plane. There's a loan on the plane. So that's how much the loan payments tallied last year. And you have to put some money away for that engine rebuild unless you just happen to have 40 grand laying around. And I spent $8,000 in fuel for my personal flying. So all total last year, that plane cost me $31,000 to own and fly. So that's a long way from free. Now let's say the balloons is paid off and I own the plane outright. Now it changes the numbers a little bit. You still have the engine TBO funds you need to, to put money in. You're still going to have fuel that you're going to need to buy. So it would have cost me about $12,000. So I'm not sure how you could change those numbers to get rid of $12,000 to make that plane free to fly. Now there are some advantages. I uh, mentioned in the video, there's tax advantages for me. Uh, it does help offset the costs, even though I'm not flying for free. I don't have to pay to rent a plane and I own the plane. So I have a little more flexibility when I can get it. And in my case, it's actually turning out to be profitable to own the plane. Well, as you can see from the numbers, I don't think it's possible to own and fly a plane for free. At least this plane, my situation, um, possibly you could own it for free as my numbers sh uh, showed. You can manipulate that, but not fly it. Uh, but there's still a lot of advantages. Uh, it helps defray the cost. I probably wouldn't be able to afford this plane uh, without the lease back. It really helps uh, offset some of the bills, at least until it's paid off and those monthly payments go away. Uh, there's some tax advantages in my case. And another big one is the appreciation. Believe it or not, you would think, well, planes like our car, it's going to depreciate. Uh, in this date and time, uh, my plane has about doubled in value since I bought it. So that's actually uh, a pretty good investment. I didn't know that was going to happen. I didn't buy it for that reason. But you need to weigh those factors in also. Um, do you want to rent or try to buy, whether you want to lease back? There's a lot of decisions to make. You really need to look at the numbers careful, and I would really be careful what numbers I choose to use.
Uh, like I say, some of these YouTube videos with some of these just estimate numbers, I take that with a grain of salt because uh, I'm showing you real numbers here. So hope that was helpful. Maybe make you help you make your decision on whether you want to buy a plane or not. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Autopilot. Good morning, Liz. This is the Tower, Diamond 526 Delta Series 2 to the west with Bravo, inbound full stop. Number 526 Delta Sierra, Elizabeth City Tower, I dent, and wind's kind of split in the runway right now. Uh, zero one zero at one zero, and uh, right now in our left end went for runway two eight because I got a departure taxiing out. But I'll let you know if I can get you in on ten. Hi, right, in our left end went for two eight, and I dent five two six Delta Sierra. I dent observe. Thank you. Hey, disinformation, Charlie Current. Uh, Elizabeth City Tower, 526 Delta Sierra is left out, wind 28. Remember, 526 Delta Sierra, the wind is uh, 010 at 10 and runway 28, clear to land. Clear to land, 28, 526 Delta Sierra. Traffic, 12 o'clock, same altitude, less than one mile. Zero, just a heads up here, however you want to plan it. Uh, I'm going to, after this takeoff, I'm going to bring you back around for runway 10. So you can fly out to the west and re-enter the final. All right, I'll fly out and then into your final for runway 10 at 9 p.m. Thank you.